Hello YouTube, Mark here, and um, I'm not in the Havana summer house, I'm meeting up with a friend and very special guest, Chris Shaw, who used to do videos, Cobbs and Cubans, and obviously he's doing a lot of piping videos now, so obviously pop over to, uh, it's BJV Pipes, isn't it? It is, yeah. yeah. And I always keep forgetting it. <laughs> so, but uh, yes, I've come down today to visit, and um, he's very kindly offered a cigar to smoke and um, I will pass you over because obviously Chris is a much more of an aficionado than I am. <laughs> I don't think we'd go that far. Oh I would definitely <laughs> say that far so, um, so take it away Chris. Yeah so we have got the H Upman Royal Robusto which is uh, an Edmundo size so we're a little bit bigger than a, a Robusto size and uh, I think that'd possibly be a little bit fatter, but it, it were a, a special release, so I think these are 2013 box date. But from memory, and I could be wrong here, I think they were released 2011. I think so, don't, don't take that as gospel. But these actual cigars are 2013, and uh thing we're at about a medium medium uh, smoke strength wise and I believe we're looking for chocolate coffee them type of flavors earthy so yeah mm -hmm. see I would have known any of that <laughs> I was just sticking them in my mouth like them and smoke them and hope for the best so, but yes, I'm really looking forward yeah, to it. Yeah, I mean, the, the, the quite, for Cuban, they're quite a nice constructed cigar. Yeah, I was, just, I was just looking at the wrapper there, like you say, there's no horrible yeah, sort of veins. Got that it's very nice. Nice triple cap on, mm. which they're renowned for, the Cubans. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so we'll see. I think we're both going for a V cut, aren't we? I think we are, yeah. So we'll see what. I do like the You see, cut. this is always a nerve wracking bit. It's like you cut it. And then it's like, oh, don't be plugged. Don't be plugged. Let's have a good draw at least. Well, I've been quite lucky with um, cigars that I haven't had. The one that's plugged because I haven't got one of those little spikes to work my way through. I tend to go and get yeah. like, a, like a toothpick or one of the barbecue sticks to try. And yeah, there's one inside you, but it's not one of them fancy ones. Yeah. Yeah, that that's be, just a yeah, try. that's just a kebab skewer. But, but you, always, you get them special ones, can't you? With like little ribs on, little ribs on. Yeah, so you can twist them. It's and almost like them. an old like harpoon that they use on the wheel, isn't it? So, yeah. but I'm always panicking because, like you say, if you put it through there, is it going to end up pushing out the sides? And you know, yeah, like, no, I've got, got a little panic. Pretty good draw. Mm. Yeah, so you can see. Obviously, I'm using this Zyka cutter and you've got the calibre yeah you? and you can see mine's a shallower cut that's like yeah so yeah. obviously quite a bit of difference in cutters there but luckily like you say it's got that a good size cap on it yeah, so it's yeah. not going to end up you always panic that it's going to end up falling apart and but unraveling. we were just saying earlier obviously if yeah that's pretty good but if it were a little bit tight, I'd go across it, so you get like a cross, and then failing that, I'd just get the normal cutter and, and take quite a chunk off. But no, I think I'm good with that. Well, it's actually a nice dry draw. Huh? Yeah, it's uh, a bit again like a hay. Yeah, like a hay seed, that cedar. Mm, that's quite nice actually. And you've got your fancy lighter, haven't you? I'm gonna use the uh, I'm gonna use my pipe lighter soft flame dissing. So I'll just have a little I've got the Calibri. And I'm hoping I've got enough gas left in it. <laughs> I've I'm, got I've got some here I've got. I'm here. renowned for like getting set up and starting a video and then I'll try and light it and say, like, oh I've got more gas left in it. Like me, mine's going. This <laughs> is just <laughs> I mean, oh, uh, I we knew both was, out of gas. I knew it. I, I've got something in it. We'll be we'll be right back after the adverts. <laughs> we back <laughs> after some technical dif difficulties. Eh? <laughs> I know if I was really good at editing, I would put the. We'll be right back. <laughs> oh, 
really sweet mm. mine you know when you get when you take that puff in you kind of hold it and then get that retro ale get a proper sweetness there Ooh, yeah not getting not getting no pepper or no i'm not getting no sort of bitter almonds So obviously, like Ooh. I said, these are 2013, so what we got in there, seven, eight years? Eight years, my God. Does make a difference with Cubans, in my opinion. We've spoke about this before. People go out, buy a Cuban from an online retailer or your local bricks and mortar. And if it's a fresh Cuban, you know, like just the same year or even the year before, it's a totally different experience to having an aged Cuban it's uh, for me they've got to have five five years really and it just, it just it's just a totally different different smoke but if you don't know that and you go out and buy one and, and you're just not clicking with them and thinking my god why have I paid 20 quid for this and it yeah. tastes no difference to uh, you know like, uh, like a, a new world, thing, new yeah, world yeah. Yeah. which they're fantastic as you know they're great smoke them straight away fantastic what you get is what you get kind of flavor wise i find with a new world you tend to what you start with you'll finish with you know so if it's that kind of pepper air, you you kind you change a little bit but basically you get that same flavor but with an aged cuban i expect the flavors to change as them thirds go down yeah uh, and we will see <laughs> do you ever purchase a cigar yeah, I will do. Yeah. Like on your last video where you showed it exact same technique yeah. as well, just blow out, get that flame burning, and just burn off that excess. I just came across I came across like the the purging by chance. Uh, I think it was Cigars Daily's channel. He did a one, and and obviously I've had cigars in the past, and I've gotten so far down they've just been so bitter, and I've literally just binned them, not realizing that obviously you get the build up of ammonia and nasties in there. And then now pretty much always purge. Yeah. Get about a quarter of the way down. Because again, if you scorch the cigar when you're lighting it, if you go a bit too a bit too hard at it, and you obviously when you first start smoking, you're just going to get really bitter, scorched tobacco taste anyway. So it could be a case of just maybe just getting about the first third for me, if that happens, and then roll the ash off, give it a purge and that for me it's just a totally different smoke. Yeah. Yeah, even after them uh, first few puffs, I won't do a purge as such with a liar, but mm. I will blow out the excess mm. because, like you say, I think on light up, you can get, uh, you can go a little bit heavy, mm. and if you're just a bit heavy with that toasting, you can sometimes start off with a little bit of bitterness. So even just after the first few, I'll kind of get rid of that. Yeah, smoking the cigar, uh, so it's not like a proper purge, but. Uh, it doesn't take long. That's why. Long. That's why. Again, if obviously you're new to smoking cigars, that's why it's always best just go out and get the cheapest cigars you can get. Get your practice. Get your technique right. Get your lighting right. You know, and getting them going because again, you go out there, you spend, you know, thirty pound on a cigar. You don't know how to light it correctly. You mm -hmm. burn it. It's going to taste horrible, and then that's it. You're going to be put off for life, and you're going to think, well, I wasted all that money because some guy on YouTube said these are absolutely fantastic cigars just for a simple thing that has been overburned or just not been set right. So yeah, just get the cheapest ones you can possibly get, practice, practice, and then when you feel like you've got it off to a tea, get yourself out there and start getting some really, really good stuff. Mm. Yeah, definitely. And. Uh... Obviously, there's all other paraphernalia that comes with it once you once you start getting into it, like your humidors. Yeah. You know, well, they do. They don't have to be a humidor. It can be a tupperdor, and but you know, you have to get your bevida packs or your beads, and you, you know, what I mean, there's a lot more to it than just buying a cigar and smoking it. Once you get into it, yeah. And like Mike said, when you're getting into it, you don't need to be concerned with any of that stuff because, like you said, to begin with. You could be doing all that stuff, but if you aren't lighting it correctly or all these little bits to start with, then don't matter how good your cigars are, you just you're not going to get it. No. 
I mean, per me personally, now I'm going towards Tupper Doors. I'm not going out and buying. I mean, I, uh, about a year ago, I was looking at getting one of these, you know, like these wine chillers type well, you see, humidor, and I was thinking, well, I've got one of them, but not like you're thinking. Right. Basically, I've just got. It cost me ninety nine pence off eBay. <laughs> Drop really lucky it was someone quite local, and it is a. It's a wine cooler, but it doesn't run. It, you know, it was because you don't want it to run anyway. It just needs to be a sealed unit, of which a, a wine cooler's perfect. And uh, there's just stop in there, so you can actually put your boxes in, you know, rather than... So it's just the actual unit with just the glass the actual door? Unit. It can't even go glass door, I can't see inside it. It's just right, a, so it's just like a... Yeah, oh, but it's, right. it's perfectly sealed. So right. once you get... I actually personally use uh, the beads where you add the distilled water to them. Uh, just because they work out cheaper over the long run than keep using bevedas. Is and, that like uh, these water, little water beads? Yeah. Right? I mean, then you swell That's up and... Yeah, right, yeah. Oh, right. I never and, thought of uh, something like that. And yeah, so I haven't got no fancy humidor or anything like that. It's kind of, uh, I think I think they're nice if you live in some big swish apartment and you've got fancy folk coming around and you you want to show off your cigars that way. But yeah, uh, you don't. You have to spend a fortune on stuff. Yeah, well, like I say that because I've been getting a lot of like cigars recently. I've just gone out and bought half a dozen Tupperware boxes. Couple of the Vida yeah. packs in there, sealed it up in in the yeah. back of the wardrobe. So yeah, it's one to look for. Have a have a scour of eBay and mm -hmm. just look for like broken broken wine chillers because you don't want them to run anyway because they run at the wrong temperature. Yeah, you know they're not in the right temperature range, and obviously if it's not in the right temperature range, it affects your humidity. So what you want is like a sealed unit, and obviously if you've got tupper doors, you end up with like loads of them mm -hmm. on the go once you start getting plenty of cigars but the wine cooler is a good good size it's sealed get the right, right amount of beads or bevedas in there to keep it at the right humidity and bob's your uncle i might give those beads a try actually yeah yeah i never thought of like you say just mm -hmm. putting the distilled water and getting them swelled up and that's, that's it. it yeah yeah oh, right yeah 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 so because i hate those like the ones that you get in a humidor where you've got to like it's like a little Sponge and you've got to keep putting oh, them up. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you're looking at them all the time because obviously it's either releasing too much or mm. you know it dries out and you forget about it. Can't believe how sweet this is. Mm. So I had one of these not too long ago, maybe a couple of months ago. Uh, so it's kind of left me memory what it was like but I don't remember it being this sweet. Uh, it's got a lovely retro hill. It does, not it? Well you know me, I love I love a like nice long retro hill so it's just bordering on the your eyes are just slightly starting to water but not streaming like you do get with some cigars but that's got a lovely lovely after I do get that. I am now getting that like uh chocolate Chocolatey coffee, so like a like a mocha type taste. I'm, I think that I think that's the sweetness I'm getting now, just edging on that chocolate. But, but not like a bit, not like a dark chocolate, not bitter. You know, it's still mm. sweet, almost caramelly. And burn, burn's pretty it's good, really. Isn't it? Yeah, it's not bad. Really nice. I was just looking there. Not bad at all. And I noticed on your way your last video video before when it dropped. <sighs> just about and just always happens. Always happens. Um, that's, that's why I wear t just ash all over the spot. Cheap t shirts. Don't <laughs> don't be wearing your uh, your Gucci or your Ralph Lauren, just get a, a little slasinger from Sports Direct because you're gonna burn it. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely. Yeah. yeah, I keep walking in and there's another t-shirt for the bin. <laughs> but then it's the same with the, the, the pipes as well, isn't it? You like you light your pipe and it does, it's going. It's like a hot rock, isn't it? It's going to drop out, and that's yeah. it. Yeah, there's a, yeah. A nice little hole in it. Yeah. Yeah, I learned that one the hard way. I've got a, <laughs> I've got a Christmas jumper one year, lovely jumper and all. 
and I've got this cigar for Christmas, and I thought, oh, right, I'm going to sit through the back and have this cigar straight down the front, burned all <laughs> in front of me. So I had, to, I had to hide it in the drawer for about six oh. months before she, the missus caught it and said, what's happened to your jumper? Oh, it happened a couple of weeks ago. I didn't dare tell her it actually happened on Christmas Day. I'd only been on my back for about three hours. <laughs> There's no no nicotine, is there? Not getting no nicotine as yet. Not yet. Uh, obviously, we hardly into it, so the tend with me cigars, it tends to creep up later on. Mm. All of a sudden, you start start thinking, oh, actually, I can feel that nicotine. Do you ever put your like your, the butt in a pipe and finish it off? I don't know. Uh, That's when it hits me. Does it? Does it really it's get like, you? Oh, Super concentrated. Yeah. It really does. I mean, because that's how I obviously got into pipes was yeah. watching an old fella finishing off my Billy Cuban cigars. And um, but even now, I mean, if I was to sort of get to finish this and put it in my pipe, then I'd get I think it's the proper sweats and concentrate yeah. through that little hole in it because torpedoes will get me more because of that funneling to that smaller cut, and I, I think it makes a difference to. To what you to what you get how you how you getting that nicotine into you uh, shouldn't do really should it no, <laughs> you wouldn't have thought you wouldn't. That no there must be something in it I think it's going really nice with the coffee as well yeah I'm on the old black coffee but I, it's still whether it's with the pipe or with a, a cigar coffee first and then for me some sort of spirit either bourbon whiskey or rum and uh, then probably beer after that but I don't, I don't find beer complements it unless no. it's really like super hot outside and you just need that extra fluid yeah i mean i had a i had a cigar the other night when it was really hot and i got um a pear cider mm. but i just felt like the cider was far too sweet for the cigar and i was like because i was sort of sitting smoking a cigar and i'm thinking there's something not quite right here and i was blaming the cigar but what i didn't realize was obviously that it was just the cider was way too sweet for it yeah so i ended up going in and getting myself a coffee and yeah. sitting back down with it mm -hmm. and again i tend to find if i get a cigar and it's, and it's quite flavorless there's not a lot going on i'll tend to get like a, a pe whiskey something like talisker or something like that. so you've got that that sort of smoky add some whiskey to it. To it. yeah and it just gives you that little bit extra yeah to a bit like when you're off <laughs> always add your cigar leaf to you <laughs> yeah. The drawer is absolutely perfect. Mm. It's like no it's effort. no effort whatsoever. No. no, it's like you literally putting it to your mouth, and it mm. says, "Oh, someone's pushing the smoke into your mm. mouth." Yeah. Yeah, really good. I mean, if you're young and obviously you're starting under this journey with cigars, then it's actually you know it's perfect for you because you've got the time where you can get these things put them away yeah and let them mature let them age but sadly for us old farts yeah it's like we, we don't we've got five years to wait <laughs> to smoke a cigar i know i mean luckily for me i start i think i started smoking cigars roughly around 2012 and this is why i've got a lot of cigars from 2013 and 14 because i had a massive spending spree I, I I had plenty of disposable income at the time, and I couldn't I couldn't repeat now because I am got that disposable income, and uh, cigars were cheaper back then, even than you know, quite considerably compared to what they are now. I mean they're a ridiculous price now, but back then they were fairly cheap. So all my cigars are pretty much from that. Well, I didn't buy any after. I think 2015 was the last time I bought any cigars. Right. So what I'm smoking is like what you accumulated is what, over them Yeah, years, yeah. Right? You know, I must have had hundreds and hundreds in them spell, you know, buying boxes of 25. Uh, just just because I had the, the time and the money. So it is something to think about. If you, are, if you do think you're going to get into it and you're going to get into Cubans, like I said, you want five years on them. So kind of be thinking, you know what I mean? Whether you whether you buy 
the some singles and then buy a box to put away. Yeah. A bit like we do with type pipe tobacco, don't yeah. we? You know, we buy a tin and buy two to put away or whatever. Uh, so if you bought a box of cigars and you intended to age them, would you take them out of the box or just keep the whole box sealed and just put it away? Just put just put the box in, but I'd I'd always I'd always try I don't think I've ever put a box away totally sealed. I've always opened them and checked them because uh if you gain them from abroad, which I was doing back then, uh, with the travelling, uh, you know, on the planes and that, obviously they're exposed to a lot of different temperatures. Right. And I have had a few boxes come before that were mouldy. Right. And luckily I had a good supplier and you just send in the pictures and he'd resend. But these things can happen, so I'd always unwrap them first, mm -hmm. have a look at them. Another thing to look for, which didn't mention much, is uh, tobacco beetles. Mm. which just you open your box check them all over look for any signs any little holes or any dust on the box because if you put them away you with your stash you're going to go through them all buffet, isn't yeah it? yeah so yeah I always check them over and i'd normally take one out try it and if it there's always exceptions to the rules some boxes were like particularly great boxes all, all Cuban boxes come with a box code on them on the back. So you get like three letters and then another three letters and then your date. So you get like a, a box code where someone would try them and there'd be like a particularly just a fantastic uh, smoking cigar from Fresh. And then everyone would drink supply up and say, uh, one that sticks in my mind is uh, Upman connoisseur number ones and the box sticks in my head the box code was pos or so pos ago 2011 was a particular box code that was a good year straight off someone said these are fantastic everyone got a supplier have you got pos posago 11 box code and they just got bought up and we all smoked them fresh and they were fantastic nice so you'd always try one for that reason as well just to see if it were like outstanding and then you'd spread word about everyone would go and buy them up and you'd smoke them fresh because it was oh they couldn't get any better they were just like a perfect as perfect as they were but like there were a few and far been, between it's probably been really good tobacco that's been yeah it's been aged already so they just literally straight out the box yeah yeah, yeah. and you get that with pipe tobacco same don't you some, yeah. some are just perfect to smoke straight away and yeah. i've done that before yeah. I've, I've bought a tin and it's smoked absolutely exceptional Mm. And I've ordered another tin and I'm getting it that's been nowhere near as nice as the one yeah. that I've had previously. So, And these sort of cigars, the regional editions, and then there's the limited editions. So these are the uh, th these are the Casa Della Pano releases. Then you get the special editions and then you get the regional editions. And all of them were made from aged tobacco. Right. So in theory, when this were made, it'd probably have five years on it anyway. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, funny enough, some of these cigars, again, when, you, when you're in the know and you're on forums with people far better knowledge than yourself, word would get about and some of them had actually start going downhill. Right. So people had either smoke them up or they'd ride it out and revisit in five years' time still know better leave them another five years or another two years try them and then maybe after eight nine ten years they'd come back right. or sometimes they might never come back so it's that gamble yeah. do i smoke them now do i not so you know this is all stuff that if you do get into it join join forums because people talk like this and tell you what's good at the moment what ain't good yeah and uh well again i mean youtube's just like a total avalanche of knowledge as well isn't it so, yeah yeah i'm gonna roll that off so it doesn't drop down yeah, the I've <laughs> not mind off i was conscious of it after talking about it super smooth no rough edges mm, yeah really nice mm. And it's nice to be smoking in company. It always makes the cigar taste nicer to me because I've got these cigars which I'll smoke by myself. These days I usually have one on a Saturday night. It's me 
Saturday cigar. The rest of the time it's pipes. And on that Saturday, I could be having this cigar now. And you just want to tell someone about it. Yeah. Or share that moment of how good it is. So it's always nice to be at a smoke with someone. So nice, nice that you've been able to come down. Oh, it's been brilliant. Thanks a lot. Um, have you not been tempted to go back to the Cobbs and Cubans channel? Do I cigars think. again? Well, my mate, Paul, uh, Paul the fireman, he was called on. Well, he is a fireman on the Cobbs and Cubans. We did it. We had a laugh initially. And then we felt that we were kind of repeating ourselves. And people were like, no, no, we love it. But we weren't enjoying it because we just felt like we were saying the same things over and over. Yeah. Uh, so we stopped it. And then I think I'd have to check that they're still on huge. And I think we did make a reunion one. And uh, we just felt like we said the same thing again. Yeah. But people did say, no, no, it was Ace, come back. Mm. Uh, but he's got a young family now. And oh, he was, he, yeah. yeah, and he's got a motorbike. Uh, he got a motorbike this summer. And so, like I said to him, I said, don't worry about coming round for a smoke. Make most of British summer because when winter comes, you won't want to be on that bike. Oh, I know. I think that's what the, the problem was with the, the pipe channel. That I was doing, like you say, you just feel as if like you're repeating yourself a little bit. So that's why I decided because I was sort of starting to break into doing more cigars on that. And even though you know, that was getting a little bit of criticism because I said, "Well, you call you call yourself Northeast Piper, but you're smoking cigars. It's a bit sort of mm. contradictory." So that's why I thought to myself, "Well, I might just take a little bit of a step back, still do the odd pipe video, but then I thought, well, yeah, I am enjoying my cigars a lot more." now so that's why i decided to start up obviously this channel as well but yeah i know what you mean about being able to just sit down and have a chat with somebody yeah and, and enjoy it and obviously you know you got a lot more knowledge than what i have about cigars because again i'm just feeling as if i'm dipping my toe back into it again yeah yeah nearly get a, a little touch of like uh, shed it you know like a little bit of booziness mm. on retro ale like uh, like a little bit of a sherry sherry type flavour that retro ale is beefing up now isn't it yeah yeah it just is just when I was doing that there I was like oof that's yeah it's definitely kicking, kicking it now it's turned into a medium cigar now yeah and I'm starting to get that sort of walnutty, sort of zingy taste to it now. It is tangy. I'm mm -hmm. getting that tang. Yeah, Which is nice because, like you say, normally I get that pretty much straight from the straight from the wall. Yeah, it's more. Unless this is easing into. It's almost like sort of the water around you warming up, isn't it? It's like yeah. it's starting off cold and then it's gradually getting warmer and warmer, and you know you're going to be boiling hot by the end of it. Yeah. The, the th it's not nowhere near as slight sweet now because because no. other things are coming into play. Mm. Like you said, that tanginess is in now. Uh, but yeah, we're in, we're into second, third. So again, this is like the beauty of Cubans for me. Tin that I'm a snob, and I'll only smoke Cubans because I've had some fun. I mean, you will better see, but Mark can see the cigar labels dotted about, and an awful lot of them. Pretty much most of them are New World cigars, and uh, I've had some absolute belters. But uh, there's something about a Cuban when it, when it's aged. Yeah, and uh, I'm going to have to invest. I think I'm really going to have to start getting some yeah boxes and getting them put away and and stashed. Like I say, it's just nice getting these factory smoke bundles yeah, yeah. just to practice on. And again, it's like I've said in the video: if you just be nice just to think to yourself, well, yeah, I just fancy one with me coffee tonight. And just to go up there and just smoke something that's only cost you pennies. Mm. But yeah. if you start smoking something like this yeah. every night, I mean, that is really going to cost you yeah. a lot of money. Well, like I like I just said, sort of thing, I, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm one, one a week, rest of the time it's pipes. Mm. And then on a Saturday night, I'll treat myself to a Cuban. Yeah. And that way, I really appreciate it. Yeah. And... I couldn't, I couldn't afford to smoke them. Yeah. Couldn't afford to smoke them every day. And if I was smoking cigars every day, I'd be doing exactly the same as Mark. Just buy factory smokes to fill the gaps in because nothing wrong with them at all. 
in fact, in a way, it kind of enhances the good cigars when you get them. Yeah. So, I mean, because I've been smoking sort of like the factory smokes this week, sitting down to this, like you say, it's just, oh, you can just taste it. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. just such a really, I'm getting yeah. a real pepper in my nose now as well. Yeah, it has got peppery. Yeah. I was just about to say that tingles there. Just thinking there, that's like, like that really like peppery, periky. Yeah. Yeah. See, which I love because I do love sort of like peppercorn steaks and stuff like that. So for mm. me, perique and peppery cigars. Yeah, I'm a big perique fan. That's that's my favourite with pipe tobacco vapours. So, mm. uh, it feels like it feels like so it feels like you're actually having a smoke when you can feel that pepperness for yeah. me you know and that's where i could never understand what people got from cigarettes because there was not you know there was none of that like i mean i'm not like really i'm not a cigarette smoker so i can't really go too much into it but i have had like the odd ones out when i've been out for a drink and, and things like that but when i went out and then i started having a, a like a just cheap hamlet or panatella when i was having a drink it, you actually felt as if you'd had yeah. a smoke didn't you yeah yeah you know, you, you, it sort of stayed with you, whereas with the cigarette, it just felt as if it was puff gone, mm. and that was it. There was nothing. Whereas with a cigar, you had that tingle in your nose still, even though after, afterwards, and yeah, um, and that. Taste. I mean, I I was a cigarette smoker, like you know, when I was younger, and uh, I always remember I'm in that cigar ma uh, cigarette mouth. Mm. Now, for me, you don't get that with cigars. And I mean, in this in particular, I've just got such a mouth, clean mouthfeel. Mm. You know, there's no furriness or which, you know, you get with just cigarettes. It's a total, total different experience. It's a bit like where well, you can translate it to all sorts of things like coffee, you know, just drinking instant. And then all of a sudden you start having freshly ground coffee. You start to pick up real coffee flavours. Mm not just a generic coffee and you know cigars are like that it didn't to someone who doesn't smoke they're like well you just it's just smoke you're just smoking but yeah. you know for those that know and obviously you guys watching this are probably smokers yourself and uh there's, a, there's just so much more to it Well, my wife was like that when I when I started like smoking again. Because when we first met, and obviously I never used to bother. Mm. And it's only been sort of like in the last couple of years that I've, I've gotten back into it. And luckily, she 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 doesn't mind. I mean, she's a little bit funny sometimes if I have a cigar late at night in the conservatory, because then obviously it does end up. Yeah, and yeah. Because we live in a bungalow, it's it's basically right through it sort of thing. So I tend to try not to have a cigar too late. But I'm, I am lucky in the, this. She will let me get away with. It. Um, but she'll say, what, what do you get out of it? And I'll say, well, for me, it's 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 like sitting down to a nice steak. Mm. You know, you, you can go to McDonald's and get mm. a burger, and it's like, yeah, you forgot about it 10 minutes later, and in yeah. fact, you probably want another one. Yeah. But when you sit down with a cigar, it's like sitting down in a restaurant with a really good cut of beef, Yeah. nice peppercorn sauce on it, yeah. and it, when you've eaten it, you feel like you've had something... Yeah, and it's, you're relaxed after it. Yeah, and then you, and then during week when you work over, you're telling everyone how good that steak yeah. was because yeah. it, it's in Cause your it memory. Yeah. Yeah, 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 it's a good analogy that. Yeah, I mean, I'm I'm actually going to a, a like a, a barbecue in a few weeks' time, and I'm actually at home at the minute now thinking, what cigars should I take along with us? Because yeah. I know there's some cigarette smokers at work, and I mean, I thought I'm going to have to take some along. Yeah, and sort of try and. Say, look, you know, why don't you try one of these? And yeah. we'll just sit down and give us your thoughts on it, type thing. Mm. Yeah, real, <clears throat> real peppery feel now in nostril. Mm. Tingle, that that tingle. Which there were none of that on first retro ales, just sweetness. Yeah, fantastic. fantastic. I'm actually struggling on the retro ale now. Mm. Yeah, yeah, you that, can't. That first one I did, it was a full mouthful. It, now it's like... You only need a bit, don't yeah, you? Yeah, and it's straight away, it's 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 there at the back. Yeah. yeah. And again, just like, pretty much razor sharp yeah. bird. Spot on. Yeah, yeah. Which, you know, like, Cubans are in now, I'll be first to call them for construction. They're, they're usually shocking. 
and you get all sorts of crazy burns and yeah they're not i believe in recent times they have got better but from this era when i would buy them they yeah. were just shocking construction i mean i don't get us wrong i mean i've, I've bought a few sort of a couple of years ago i always treat myself to one birthday special occasion christmas whatever and i i tried it i can't remember then which brand it was but it was about 15 pounds for the cigar i bought for my christmas cigar and it got about wasn't even halfway down and then it just literally just sort of like went just went. and there was just like this half a cigar of nothing yeah, 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 and it yeah, just yeah. literally just burned right the way up yeah the wrapper yeah, was yeah. fuming because i thought you know you know that's you might not think 15 pounds a lot of money but in the same breath it's like come on i want some yeah 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 and but, yeah, amount of ones that i've had plugged and mm -hmm. initially i used to fight with them and mess about with them but you soon learn unfortunately it's costly but life's too short for plug cigars and you just gotta you just gotta toss it or chop it up like you said and put it in your pipe yeah. tobacco or whatever but this, uh, unfortunately this is cubans and it's like out of a box of 25 you're gonna have some plugged ones you're gonna have some ton link and yeah and you're gonna have some shocking burns but oh, flavor wise for the ones that you get that are outstanding you just you, that's you just there yeah, you're, you're hooked i've had many uh like i said romeo and juliet ones i've bought a box of 25 and numerous times there's been two or three of them yeah no good and again like we were mentioning earlier this is what got me into smoking the pipes was the fact that i would just chop it up and yeah. stick it in a pipe and away you go but yeah. the downside is it's obviously it's a lot more of a nicotine hit than what you get smoking it just on the door on its own yeah Yeah, it's got a lovely taste. Yeah, outstanding. Mm. Like the bitterness isn't too over the top, is it? It's just like a nice little... Yeah, I would say now the chocolate has turned to that dark chocolate. Mm. So, like the back back edges of my tongue, I, I, I pick it up that bitterness like I would if I'm in a dark chocolate bar. See, I get funny, I get funny tastes from like from cigars it's like for me it, it tends to be like more nutty mm -hmm. i'll get like that like that walnut or you like your bit of almond taste yeah that, that yeah i get that bit of almond yeah but i've noticed as well and it's mostly with cuban strangely enough and one of the last times was the um the monte cristo i smoked you know like that taste you get from pear drops i don't like pear drops oh do you not <laughs> well i get i get that right yeah, yeah. And you know, and it's like, it's like you know, you know, well, you just said yourself, you know exactly what I mean about yeah, that taste yeah. in your mouth. Yeah, yeah. And I, but the strange thing is, I tend to only get it from Cubans. Right. I've not had it from new, uh, the, like the New World ones. Yeah, yeah. So it's strange, isn't it? Yeah, it might be something specific to that tobacco then. Uh, yeah. Yeah, it's uh, definitely more body now, and you know the the smoke feels thick in your mouth. Mm. There's a lot, there's an awful lot of smoke from them, isn't there? Yeah, you know, smoke smoke for days. I mean, we've got the door and window open, and it still looks quite smoky on screen. And I've got the fans running on low. Uh, there's plenty of you know some some cigars you struggle struggle to get smoke out of them, but I these know. are bellowing. Yeah. I think what's been good about this as well is we had a bowl of. Um, pipe tobacco earlier and I think that sweetness we got from that tobacco earlier I think that's what's really helping the yeah. taste on this now as well yeah you've already got your taste buds yeah. firing yeah that's a, it's a good it's a good idea that actually to uh, to somehow get get your taste buds firing mm. uh, whether to be honest if I'm having a cigar I always like to have something to eat before I'm just just for the nicotine as well but I think to get your taste buds firing on you know eating something beforehand is quite a good idea actually uh just just to get everything in in motion it's funny because we just mentioned there because i've noticed a lot recently that when when i come home from work i usually first thing i'll do is i'll make a cup of coffee and i'll go up the top and i'll enjoy a bowl of tobacco in my pipe but it's funny because i noticed this week that i get about halfway through my pipe because the weather's been nice as well at the start of the week I got about halfway through my pipe and I thought, nah, I 
having a cigar. Yeah. And I've gone back down, I've getting the, like a Maduro yeah. and I've come back out and I've finished it off with a Maduro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like, you see, I think it's like, it's getting that start yeah, of the pipe and I've got, no, I just you want, want some of that. Yeah. <laughs> Definitely. Mm. So yeah, I think that bowl's just set this up lovely. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. When we did Cobbs and Cubans, funny enough, we used to do it the other way around, but we were new pipe smokers then. So we were smoking and we didn't really get pipe tobacco as such. So there were some aromatics in there and we used to class it as like having a dessert. Mm. So as taste buds were fired up from the cigar, mm. but we were usually having some kind of sweet tobacco afterwards. Yeah, they had like a cherry tobacco yeah. or a like red moon or something. Like yeah, and it, it, was quite, yeah it, was quite, it was quite nice. Yeah. yeah, it was quite nice. But then again, like you say, I mean, if you've had like a really nice meal, I think a cigar's sweet in itself, isn't it? Yeah. You know, I mean, yeah. That's why they used to come around with trolleys and stuff. Yeah. Didn't they? I mean, them days are long gone, but yeah. can you imagine now being a cigar smoker, how nice it'd be after you've had a steak if someone were oh. bringing around a trolley of cigars and you could actually sit there and mm. smoke. Smoke inside as well, which yeah. the last time I did that was uh, 2016. We went for his 10 year wedding anniversary to Vegas. We got married in 2006 in Vegas. And we went back for his 10 year anniversary. And obviously you could still smoke in the casinos. And it was just so nice to be able to smoke inside. Yeah. And and not, you know, not have to be banished to the shed or. Sometimes I wonder if that's maybe why like cigar prices have gone through the roof. Because again, you're not getting that regularity of people coming in because they can't smoke indoors anymore. And like you say, to sort of buy a 10 pound or 15 pound cigar, just to smoke it in your summer house, in your shed, in your conservatory. Yeah. You're not getting that benefit from it. No. But like you say, sat here with somebody, Yeah. you know, you're having a, a nice chat and you enjoying a drink and it's, it's adds to the experience, doesn't it? No, it's like yeah, without a doubt. Yeah, it's like sitting down, like, like you say, like sitting down after a meal with like a really good whiskey and a cheese board or something. It's like yeah. it just finishes your evening off. Whereas, yeah. like you say, this, yeah, but you don't get that when you just sat on your own and no, you know, it's not the same. And I think another reason why I've probably gone back to the cigars is we're doing sort of Zoom meets and things like that, and you're chatting to people on Zoom meets. You've got that almost like somebody's in the room with you. Yeah. And you, you are enjoying it a lot more. And I know obviously with, with us doing those sort of piece of card things with the pipe tobacco reviews and everything, it's more enjoyable because you're all smoking the same tobacco, you're all chatting away about it. And it's, I think to me, and I, I, know, and I know, do know several other YouTube um, presenters feel the same way that it's, it's sort of boosted them up a little bit. It's made it a bit more enjoyable because it felt as if it was drifting off a little bit yeah because when you just sort of sat in front of a camera and you're trying to explain and when somebody who's not there with you hopefully they're maybe smoking a one while you chatting about it but when you're actually doing it live with somebody there as well it just really does boost that yeah and also you enjoy it a lot more like flavor wise like you were just mentioning burnt almonds I wouldn't, I wouldn't have thought of that, but because you said it, and I'm like, ah, shit, yeah, that's, that's, I think that's the taste I'm getting, you know. So like when you sat here and you're saying, oh, I'm getting this, or I'm getting this, then you start thinking, in, like for me personally, I can't always put the taste to a to a flavour, mm. but if someone suggests that flavour, kind of start thinking and. I think, yeah, that is what I am actually tasting. Well, it's funny because I got I got a bag of um, almonds weeks ago. And we were just sat eating and me and the wife watching the television. And I just sort of turned to Karen and I said, that's the taste I get from a cigar. Yeah. We, ch we chewing away through these almonds and that little sort of nutty, ch uh, sort of bittery taste in your mouth. Yeah. Was, that, that's what I get from a cigar. Well, it's funny with the... Uh, sorry to talk about pipe tobacco here, guys, but <laughs> you sent me that Maltese Falcon, didn't you? Yeah. And it's uh, there's some sort of mystery spice in it, no. and to say it's ginger. Yeah. I think Phil gets nutmeg, mm. but I do get ginger because I have a have a bit of a thing with uh, ginger 
and rhubarb jam or jelly for you guys in America. And because I have that quite regular, that ginger, I can really relate that to the Maltese Falcon. Mm. You know, and so I think sometimes with, like I said, with what you personally eat in your life or the flavours you have, yeah, something can be seen, you know, nutmeg, cinnamon, ginger, they're not that far apart, but maybe Phil eats more nutmeg. Yeah. And I eat more ginger. So we're getting similar sort of thing. That's probably why I don't get as much chocolatey from the cigars because I'm not a chocolate Yeah, you see, like I'm a big, massive on chocolate. I'm not a massive chocolate <laughs> fan. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But because I do like sort of eating like the trail mixes and that, like eating sort of uh, walnuts and almonds. Yeah. That's probably why I'm getting the relation That's to it. the. To and the all cigars. these things are like, you know, the dark chocolate, the almonds, they're all bitter. Yeah. So the bitter taste again depends on what you personally can relate yeah. to. So when you're reading reviews, guys, it's like, if if the say someone does say chocolate, and you're not a chocolate fan, think of something bitter that you like, yeah. and kind of related to that bitterness. Yeah, because yeah. I know I know some people will, will will smoke a cigar and they'll say, oh, it's very leathery, and I'll think to myself, well, I've never chewed my belt, so I <laughs> couldn't really relate to what leather tastes like. But again, like you said, it's probably that bitter. Yeah, sort of aftertaste that's that's yeah. coming through. Same we like when they say earthiness. Obviously, we're not all going out and eating. Yeah, soil. I did when I was a kid, <laughs> but you don't now. But you kind of relating it to probably the hay and probably like you say, yeah, like the grass. Yeah, sort of. Your, your smells coming yeah. into it's kind of putting a smell to a taste into. Yeah. Because uh, so, like I mean, like they say sometimes I'll I'll have a sniff of a cigar and I'll think God, it smells like horse shit. But it's just like you say, it's that mature hair and it's, and, you know, when you walk down the street, yeah. there's been a horse. Well, funny uh, enough, when yeah. uh, when we did Cobbs and Cubans, one of the ones we used to say a lot on the uh, pre-draw was that it, it tasted like horse shit. But obviously we haven't eaten horse shit. It's that, it's that smell and you're kind of associating it. Uh, and we always knew it was going to be a good cigar. Yeah. If it if it if it if it tasted like that to start with, but it's it's funny. I don't I don't know if you'd see if you'd watch the, the the one I did and um, I sort of like I tend to like waft it under my nose when I first start. Yeah. And sometimes I'll get like a pissy nappy smell, <laughs> and then I know it's going to need a purge because I think it's that ammonia in there coming through. So that's yeah. why I tend to when I first light it, I'll tend to give it a little waft. Yeah. And if I get that ammonia smell. I think, yeah, this is going to need a purge. Yeah. You but see, I'm, this for me won't need a purge, no, I can tell now. And nah, that's because been... the draw has been perfect. So I am, I think, you know, like if you're struggling with it and you're sucking it through, you're pulling a lot of moisture through, yeah. it starts to get clogged up with the tar, etc. And that I think that's when you need a purge. But because the construction has been superb on these, uh, and we haven't had to, it's been no effort to smoke. It's uh, mine won't need a purge anyway. No. I'm pretty confident of that. I mean, I'm looking around the edges as well. And there's not really like a lot of black in there. There's not like no. a lot of tar build up either. And mine's quite, and you know, obviously yeah. mine's a small cut. So because like, see, sometimes you can obviously. I've done them before where I've rechopped them, you know, yeah. to get rid, of, get that rid end. of that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I tend to find that if I do like an aggressive cut like that, I mean, look at that now. That's really opened up there. I think you tend to get me personally. I mean, it could be different for other people. I think if you've got the bigger cut on the end, you get a lot more of that tar build yeah. up around yeah, it. Yeah, there's a lot of area for it to come through in there. So I can understand why people will just maybe use a, a cigar punch so you're just getting that smaller, so it's mm. not it's not collecting as much, but this has been sweet as a nut. Yeah. Really nice. Thank you. Yeah, my pleasure. My pleasure to share it. Like I say, it's uh, a lot better shared. But uh, that's another thing as well. Like I think what you tend to find with people who smoke cigars as well is if you do, if you do get a, a really good cigar, you do tend to think to yourself, oh, I've got to go and see so and so. I've got to sit yeah. down with them and smoke one of these with them and like, because yeah, yeah. you just love it so much, you want to like yeah, get you want someone else, else to yeah, yeah, so it. Yeah. So again, that's I think that's another good thing about like such as pipe smoking, cigar smoking is that. You know, you share the love sort of thing. You know, you look, you, you get a really good tobacco, and you think, oh, I've got to send a sample of this out because got to see what they think because I know they're going to love it and mm. so yeah it's um yeah I mean like when Cass sent me down them uh, Lakeland tobaccos to try he just wanted me to love mm. them so much mm. uh, you, you could just tell he was always texting me saying have you tried it have you tried it I'm like no not yet I'll try it try it 
because he, you know, he wanted me to experience what he's experiencing. Uh, it doesn't always work, you know. We can't all love the same things, but generally, if someone raves on about something, it's generally good, isn't it? That's why you tend to you've got to say as well is obviously this is my taste. It might, it's not for everybody. Mm -hmm. Because I don't want to sit, sort of sit down and smoke a thirty-five pound cigar and say this is the best thing since sliced bread, and somebody rushes out and buys a thirty-five pound cigar and says that's what a shit. It's like, well, yeah. again, how experienced are you? Are you just a new smoker? Yeah. So again, it's like I said before, if you are dipping your toe and you go to a tobacconist, tell them what you like, what sort of flavors you like. Again, um, I love the peppercorn steak. So if I say to a tobacconist, I really like a, a peppery taste. He, if he's a good tobacconist, he'll know exactly which cigar you've got to go for. Yeah. You know, don't go in and say to a tobacconist, I want your best cigar in the shop, because you'll end up spending hundreds, wouldn't you? Yeah, yeah. And you'll probably not like it, because it's not going to be to your taste. But if you go in and you say, well, I like a nice latte coffee taste, he'll know exactly yeah. which one. I mean, again, when I went from cigars onto pipe tobacco, I sort of went into the, my local brick and mortar, which sadly isn't there anymore. And I said, I want a pipe tobacco oh, that tastes like cigars. And he said, well, why don't you just keep smoking cigars? And I said, well, because they cost me a fortune. Yeah. And strangely enough, he put me straight onto a 75% ladder king. Right. Which was like, at the, at the, when I tell people now, they'll like go, what? Yeah. But I've come from cigars, yeah, so I'm yeah. used to that really yeah. hefty taste. And I'm glad he did because I mean I, I fell in love with Latakia straight away, and like you say, that to me was was like you got that really smoky taste, yeah. and so that was perfect. But if you don't like sort of campfire taste and barbecue type things, then Latakia and you know yeah. it's just not going to work for you, is it? <clears throat> but yeah, even with the uh, online retailers, uh, especially likes of. GQ Tobaccos, My Smoking Shop, uh, The Backy Shop. I know these guys, if you ring them up and talk to them like this and tell them you, they, they will point you in the right direction. Mm. So there's no need just to kind of work your way through the descriptions and try and work it out for yourself. Just, yeah. just talk to them and they, they're more than happy, more than happy to, to point you in the right direction. And don't read reviews online. I never read reviews online because, like you say, Everybody's taste is different. Somebody will go on there, give something five stars every time. We've done it recently with uh, pipe tobacco rolls that people have said this is great. We've tried them and thought, oof, you know, don't go with reviews again. Let, let them know what you like. And um, some tobacconists at the end of the day, they're just there to make money. So if you walk in, they will try and sell you the most expensive cigar they possibly can. Yeah. But again, if you get a good one, Go in regularly, you know, like you say, chat to them. That's what they're there for. I mean, if anybody's going to know what you're talking about, it's these guys. And like you say, just start off, just say, listen, I'm just starting off. I just want a cheap cigar just to get used to it. Again, get my technique right. Then as you progress, if you're lucky, you might actually have a tobacconist that has a smoking room in the back. Mm -hmm. So you can go in there. Nine times out of ten, there's guys sitting in there already. You can have a chat with them and just say, well, look, this is what I'm looking for. Nobody would be better to talk to it about than another cigar smoker. And um, it's like everything else; it's it'll come. You know, it takes time. None of us are straight into these. No, it's no, like, definitely not. Oh yeah, these are great. I mean, it took me a long time before I could sit and smoke a cigar right the way through. So, yeah. But oh, this is. Oh. Yeah, it's good. Uh, you know when you get you know when you get like a really good tobacco. Yeah. and cigar and you just don't want it to end yeah <laughs> yeah you yeah know, it's like looking at that now and it's like oh, i wish it was still there yeah <laughs> the uh i can feel the nicotine now i'm getting it's a little light a little, little bit of fuzziness between my eyes there i'm just starting to feel bit. that little pulse but it's, it's, it's not it's it's not past medium no. it's not past medium it's, you know when i've had it i'll have known i've had a good cigar yeah and i'll still have that little fuzziness for an hour or so afterwards mm. And that kind of satisfaction. Uh, I mean, you know, you've got a really humdinger of a nicotine hit when you you, you, can, you literally feel your face <laughs> drain, and you're like you're sort of sitting there thinking you've had Botox. You know, it's like mm. set it aside for a a little while, let it go out, go and get some fresh air, get some sweet chocolate or something or a biscuit just to yeah. get into your system, 
have a cuppa, go back to it. Yeah. So we we used to actually when when we did Cubs and Cubans, we had a little chocolate stash under one of the chairs here. Yeah. And you, you do sometimes yeah. you just have to reach for that bit of sugar yeah. just to take that nicotine level down. Don't keep hammering away at it because you will make yourself yeah, sick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that will put you off. Yeah. I thought yeah. oh, that's wonderful, man. Yeah. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah. I did um and ah over certain cigars, which cigar to pick. And uh, I was pretty confident this would deliver, so uh, I think it was a good choice. Mm. It's a lovely taste. Mm. Yeah, tongue. And again, you I'm know, not reaching for the coffee to swim my mouth. No. Right? It's like it's. You know, at this sort of stage, I, I would expect to get more bitterness than I'm getting now. Mm. Uh, like I say, we, you know, we've talked about it numerous times about purging. Uh, but yeah, no, it's, uh, it's all good, eh? Yes. <laughs> That's our last ring of meal. She'll be, uh, she'll be wondering if she needs to get the tea on. <laughs> she likes a, she likes a pizza on a Saturday night. Our last, so she'll be like, "What, what time are we having pizza?" Yeah, we're the same. It's usually Friday night, Chinese or pizza. Well, I'm going to wrap the video up there. I can't believe we've been on for nearly an hour. Yeah, hopefully, guys, you've so, picked up some nice little tips yeah. and it ain't just too old. Fat swaffling shit. Well, I suppose it is, but hopefully out of and amongst it all, if you have stuck with us this long, Definitely. you have picked up some little little tips. Yeah, just doing a video. So I'm doing pizza. Okay. So yeah. well, so. if you're still here, thank you so much for watching. And again, Chris, thank you so much for having us here. No, thank you for coming. Like um, I said, pleasure shared, isn't it? And all it that. is. Yeah, definitely. And it's oh, you've been on the money with this one. It's been absolutely wonderful. Yeah. So you never know, we might have a repeat of this for the, oh, well, yeah, hey. for you guys watching sometime. I might even get up to Mark sometime, or he Definitely. might get back down here. I'm sure we will at some point. I mean, if you if you ever up up, up, up my way, I definitely have to have a look up to uh, the Cuban Cigar yeah. Club because again, they've got a smoking room in the back, and uh, and you've got some nice Cubans to do some videos on as well, haven't you? So yeah, definitely, we'll better share them with you. I might. Uh, I might actually break into them now because I'm a bit like I don't want to smoke them. So because again, when you just sat on your own, you think, well, mm. do I really want to smoke that on my own? Well, At least if you're doing a video with these guys, you're kind of sharing your experience, yeah. are you? So makes yeah. it a little bit more palatable. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. So thank you for watching. Take care, and uh, see you all soon. Bye for now. <laughs>